Good day from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston as you look live at Launch Pad 6, Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where a Soyuz 2.1A booster stands fully fueled, ready to launch 27 and a half minutes from now on a cargo run to the International Space Station, delivering some 2.7 tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the Expedition 71 crew. This begins a very busy period for the crew on board the International Space Station. The countdown for today's launch under perfectly clear skies, a mid-afternoon launch at Baikonur from Site 31, and a late spring day where the temperature is 82 degrees Fahrenheit, perfect conditions for the Soyuz booster to propel the progress on an eight minute, 49 second ride to its preliminary orbit, where the spacecraft will separate from the third or upper stage from the Soyuz to begin a two day chase to catch up to the International Space Station for an automated docking to the Poisk module on the space facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station early Saturday morning. We'll have more about that in a moment. The uh, countdown uh, has been proceeding by the book. You're looking at uh, the top of the uh, Soyuz booster. It's a three-stage rocket with two umbilicals buttressed up against the side of the rocket that are providing the replenishment of fuel for the first stage of the vehicle, as well as uh, the ground supply uh, data that uh, the technicians in the blockhouse in Baikonur are monitoring during the final minutes of today's countdown. This vehicle rolled out to the launch pad in Baikonur on Monday horizontally on a rail car where it was hoisted uh, hydraulically to its vertical position. Gantry arms that you see uh, now retracted on either side of the vehicle uh, swung closed around uh, the spacecraft to enable technicians to begin to hook up fuel lines and electrical lines for the final days of processing. In advance of uh, today's launch, uh, the Progress 86 cargo craft uh, departed the Poisk module back on Tuesday to clear the Poisk docking port for Saturday's arrival of the new cargo ship. The uh, 34 orbits uh, or two-day uh, rendezvous operations uh, match uh, the orbital mechanics required for this particular launch that will bring uh, the Progress to uh, its automated docking to Poisk at uh, 6.47 a.m. Central Time, 7.47 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday morning. The Progress is carrying uh, to the station 5,520 pounds of cargo. That's the equivalent of 2.7 tons of cargo, broken down to 2,844 pounds of dry cargo and supplies, 1,662 pounds of propellant, 926 pounds of water, and 88 pounds of nitrogen for the Expedition 71 crew on board the International Space Station. The Expedition 71 crew is awake at this hour. They're uh, moving into a variety of different operations, including uh, the verification of uh, U.S. spacesuits that will be worn for a series of three spacewalks out of the Quest airlock that are scheduled in the month of June. They, along uh, with their Russian colleagues, uh, will be uh, continuing to monitor the uh, trek of the progress to the International Space Station over the next two days. The uh, arrival of the progress on Saturday will be monitored by two Russian cosmonauts, Expedition 71 Commander Oleg Kononenko, along with Nikolai Chub. They will be in the Zvezda service module on Saturday, ready to take over manual control of the flying of the Progress for a docking to the Poisk module in the unlikely event the Progress's automated uh, rendezvous system called the Coors system should experience a problem. But that's for Saturday to worry about. Today, the issue at hand is the launch and ascent uh, for the uh, Soyuz booster. Again, an eight minute, 49 second operation that will deliver the progress into its preliminary orbit. One note about the uh, Expedition 71 commander, Ale Kononenko, he is uh, on the verge of uh, one of the most uh, amazing milestones in human spaceflight history. Next Tuesday, June 4th, Kononenko will reach the 1,000 day mark in space on this, his fifth mission into space. 1,000 days coming up for Ale Kononenko next Tuesday, June 4th.
The launch operations are being conducted uh, from the uh, Launch Control Center or Blockhouse down in Baikonur. There you're looking at a balcony view of the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Koryov outside of Moscow. They will take over control of the flight of progress to the International Space Station at the point of spacecraft separation uh, for the uh, ensuing two days of the progress's journey to the orbital outpost. The uh, countdown milestones that lie ahead as we are approaching the T-minus 22 minute mark in the countdown. At uh, the T-minus seven minute mark, a launch key will be inserted into the launch bunker. A, that will transition the launch sequence into its automated mode. At the T-minus five minute 30 second mark, uh, launch control will provide a range report, uh, basically that the range in Baikonur will be clear and that the Soyuz rocket is ready to begin its journey. Onboard systems will be switched to automatic control at the T minus four minute mark, followed at the T minus two minute 45 second mark by the first stage booster uh, being pressurized for flight, optimizing the flow of fuel and helping to add structural support to the Soyuz 2.1A booster. At the T minus one minute 30 second mark, the ground propellant feed to the rocket uh, to replenish the first stage uh, engines will be terminated. The Soyuz will go on internal power at the T minus one minute mark. And then uh, at the T minus 35 second mark, the first of those two umbilicals that you see buttressed up against the rocket uh, will retract. The second of the two umbilicals will retract at about the uh, T minus 16 second mark. That will initiate the launch command and auto sequence start for main engine ignition. Uh, the main engines and turbo pumps will come up to flight speed and at T zero, the uh, hold down uh, posts or hold down arms as they are called will retract and the Soyuz will be on its way. The Soyuz will be arcing out to the northeast from its launch pad into an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, matching the orbital inclination of the International Space Station. At the one minute 57 second mark into the ascent, the first stage uh, separation uh, will occur for the Soyuz booster. The second stage engines will then ignite and fire for two minutes and 40 seconds. At the three minute, three second mark into the uh, launch, the uh, shroud jettison, that's that green cone at the very top of the rocket, that will be jettisoned, exposing the progress uh, to the environment of uh, ascent and uh, the initial environment of space. At the four minute, 37 second mark into the ascent, we'll have second stage shutdown followed just seconds later by the third stage skirt jettison. The third stage engine will fire and ignite uh, for four minutes and 12 seconds on the final stage of the ascent to orbit. Third stage shutdown is scheduled at the eight minute 45 second mark into the uh, flight. And four seconds later, we'll have spacecraft separation followed seconds after that by solar array deployment and the deployment of the navigational antennas. Uh, the progress uh, will be on its way. There will be a series of engine firings called DV burns or delta velocity burns to increase and stair step uh, the progress's altitude to match that of the International Space Station as uh, it begins to fine tune its path over the next two days to reach uh, the vicinity of the orbital outpost for its automated docking on Saturday morning. We are now at uh, the T-minus 18 minute 30 second mark into the countdown. While today's operations are taking place down uh, at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, the Atlas V rocket is returning to launch pad 41 down at the Cape for final preparations for its scheduled launch on Saturday uh, morning, uh, central time, Saturday afternoon Cape time to begin uh, the crew flight test, the Boeing Starliner flight test with NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams on board. They flew back uh, to the uh, Kennedy Space Center for final preparations on Tuesday. Yesterday marked a uh, flight readiness review in which all uh, parties pulled go to proceed uh, with launch preparations. 
that will lead uh, to the launch of the uh, Starliner atop uh, the Atlas V rocket on Saturday at 12.25 and 37 seconds p.m. Eastern Time. That will begin a 24-hour uh, transit to the International Space Station and a docking to the forward port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station on Sunday afternoon. A critical flight test for Boeing and the commercial crew program, uh, basically a shakedown flight for Starliner uh, with a crew on board to uh, prove its capability uh, to uh, join uh, the fleet of uh, commercial crew vehicles that will uh, be used uh, to uh, deliver crews to the International Space Station on a rotating basis. The countdown is now inside uh, T minus 17 minutes. Everything uh, is proceeding on track. Again, uh, the vehicle was fueled uh, several hours ago after a final meeting by the Russian State Commission down in Baikonur to review uh, the status of the Soyuz booster systems and the readiness of the progress to begin its journey to the International Space Station. Just looking ahead uh, for a moment, uh, on Saturday, we will be uh, on the air at 6 a.m. Central Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, with coverage of the rendezvous and docking of the Progress to the International Space Station. That docking currently scheduled for 6.47 a.m. Central Time, 7.47 a.m. Eastern Time to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. Immediately after the completion, of our docking coverage, we will transition to launch coverage down at the Kennedy Space Center, uh, anchored out of the Kennedy Space Center and here at the Johnson Space Center of the uh, Boeing Starliner flight. That coverage will begin at 7.15 a.m. Central Time, 8.15 a.m. Eastern Time, about four hours and 10 minutes before sc the scheduled launch. We'll be joining our live coverage down there with the uh, suit up of the crew in the operations and checkout building down at the uh, Kennedy Space Center. Their uh, transit uh, from the ONC building down at the Cape to the launch pad uh, at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and all of the countdown milestones that will lead to their launch on Saturday afternoon. We're coming up on the T-minus 14 minute, 30 second mark into the countdown. Again, uh, you can see the venting of liquid oxygen from the first stage of the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster. It's a three-stage rocket that will uh, deliver the progress into its preliminary orbit, an eight-minute, 49-second ride from launch pad to orbit. We're about uh, six and a half minutes away from uh, the first uh, milestone in the terminal phase of the countdown. The uh, Soyuz first and second stage engines are ready for launch, telemetry being received from the rocket by the uh, launch engineers at the blockhouse in Baikonur. All of the Soyuz primary and backup systems are ready for launch. Currently, the International Space Station is flying uh, just off the west coast of South America, about to cross uh, the southern tip of Chile and back out over the southern Atlantic Ocean, about to move from southwest and northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. The uh, phase angle for today's launch for a 34-orbit rendezvous is uh, 276 degrees 
Today's launch window, 25 seconds in duration. But uh, the countdown is, of course, time to a precise second when the Earth's rotation will carry the Baikonur Cosmodrome launch pad at Site 31 into the plane of the station's orbit. T minus 11 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Again, all of the Soyuz systems are in excellent shape. No issues being worked by the launch control team. And again, uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow, the Russian flight controllers are watching over the final phase of the countdown and the ascent to orbit. At spacecraft separation, they will take over control of the progress for its automated flight to the International Space Station. Now T minus 11 minutes and counting. On board the International Space Station, again, a busy day uh, for the uh, seven crew members led by Station Commander Alek Kononenko. Kononenko and his uh, Russian crewmates, Nikolai Chub and Alexander Grabenkin, and NASA astronauts Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps, and Tracy Dyson are all uh, involved in a variety of activities. The uh, Russian crewmates on board the station are uh, monitoring uh, today's launch and preparing for the arrival of the progress on Saturday morning, while the U.S. crew members on board the station are involved in uh, spacewalk preparations, verifying the operation of uh, the extravehicular mobility units, or U.S. spacesuits, in the Quest airlock for the trio of upcoming spacewalks that are scheduled for June. Now, nine and a half minutes until launch. Again, uh, you're looking at uh, launch pad 6, Site 31, in a remote section of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan in the Central Asian Desert. Skies are clear, the temperature 82 degrees Fahrenheit. T minus nine minutes and counting. We're about two minutes away from the launch key being inserted uh, in the launch bunker, transitioning the launch sequence into its terminal or automatic mode for the final minutes of the countdown. The first stage engines being replenished. That uh, replenishment will be terminated at about the T minus one minute 30 second mark in the countdown. T minus eight minutes and counting. Again, uh, everything proceeding in smooth fashion with today's countdown.
The Soyuz uh, poised uh, to begin its journey to its preliminary orbit, delivering uh, the Progress 88 unpiloted cargo craft for a uh, cargo trip to the station with 2.7 tons of food, fuel, and supplies on board. T minus seven minutes and counting. The exact launch time is uh, 4 42 and 59 seconds a.m. Central Time, which is 2 42 and 59 seconds p.m. at the launch site in Baikonur. The uh, launch sequence has been transitioned into automatic mode as we approach the T minus six minute mark. T minus six minutes and counting. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The range is clear for launch. Launch uh, controllers at the blockhouse in Baikonur report that the Soyuz rocket is ready to begin its journey. The report uh, from Baikonur is that the fuel lines and other elements of the uh, first stage engines are being purged with nitrogen that fireproofs them uh, by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer from the base of the rocket. Coming up on the uh, T-minus four-minute mark. Mark T-minus four minutes. In about a minute and 15 seconds, uh, the first stage booster will be pressurized for flight. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Everything is go for the launch on time at uh, 4.42.59 a.m. Central Time. Residual fuel now being drained from the first stage. 
in advance of the uh, first stage engines being pressurized for flight. T minus two minutes, 40 seconds. And the uh, first stage is being pressurized for flight. Again, this optimizes the flow of fuel, helping to add structural support to the rocket prior to liftoff. T minus two minutes and counting. T minus one minute, 30 seconds. The ground propellant feed has now been terminated to the Soyuz booster. The Soyuz now on internal power. T minus one minute and counting. We're about 25 seconds away from the retraction of the first of the two umbilicals buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz booster. T minus 38 seconds and counting. And there is the retraction of the first umbilical. The second umbilical will retract in about 14 seconds. And the second umbilical now retracting, initiating the auto sequence start. Standing by for main engine ignition. We have main engine start. The engines and turbo pumps coming up to flight speed. And liftoff. Liftoff of the Soyuz booster, Progress 88, beginning its delivery run to the International Space Station. The Soyuz booster pitching downrange, arcing out uh, to the northeast from the launch site. All engines up and running in good shape. Good vehicle structure reported. Performance nominal, according to the uh, launch conductor at the blockhouse in Baikonur. Yaw pitch and roll, all nominal. Good structural parameters on the Soyuz booster. Fifty-five seconds into the flight. Engine chamber pressures are nominal. Good structural support for the vehicle. Now passing the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. One minute, 14 seconds into the flight. The flight reported to be nominal. Good control of the vehicle, good structural support. Blockhouse and Baikonur reporting all structural parameters are normal at the one minute 40 second mark into the flight. We're about uh, 18 seconds away from first stage separation. And we have first stage separation. 
the second stage engine up and running and will burn for the next two minutes and 40 seconds. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, all uh, of the Soyuz booster uh, engine parameters are normal. Good trajectory for the Soyuz booster. A little over six minutes of powered flight remaining. Two minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. Good second stage performance. Three minutes into the flight, everything uh, proceeding normally with the uh, ascent to its preliminary orbit for the Progress 88 cargo ship. Three minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, five and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. And we have the sh jettisoning of the launch shroud that uh, protected uh, the Progress 88 during the initial stage of ascent. Second stage shutdown is expected at the four minute, 37 second mark into the flight. All uh, control of the vehicle reported to be nominal from the blockhouse in Baikonur. This view now from a uh, camera on the upper stage of the uh, Soyuz booster. Four minutes into the flight, about 37 seconds until second stage shut down. Good performance uh, from the second stage engine reported uh, by uh, the uh, flight controllers. Four minutes, 24 seconds into the flight. Standing by for second stage shutdown. There is the uh, third stage skirt jettison. And the third stage engine is up and running. It will burn for four minutes and 12 seconds. The vehicle is stable. All parameters are normal. Five minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. About three and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. Good third stage performance. Liftoff uh, was timed perfectly, right on time at uh, 4.42 and 59 seconds a.m. Central Time, which was 2.42 and 59 seconds p.m. at the launch site in Baikonur. Six minutes into the flight, everything proceeding on track. Yaw pitch and roll for the third stage is right on the money. The third stage engine continues to perform as advertised at the six minute 30 second mark into the flight about two minutes and 20 seconds of powered flight remaining. Again, this video from a camera on the upper stage of the Soyuz booster. At uh, third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation, the progress will be inserted into a preliminary orbit about 125 miles above the Earth 
Again, a series of engine firings uh, will slowly increase the altitude of the progress to match that of the International Space Station. Seven minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, about 90 seconds of powered flight remaining. The flight uh, continues uh, to proceed in nominal fashion according to the flight controllers in Baikonur at the 7 minute 45 second mark into the flight, about one minute of powered flight remaining. The vehicle is uh, stable. All uh, third engine uh, parameters are normal at the 8 minute 25 second mark into the flight. We're about 20 seconds away from third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. Yaw pitch and roll all nominal. Standing by for third stage shutdown. And we have third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. The progress now in its preliminary orbit. Hopefully we will get a view here momentarily of solar array deploy. And there go the solar arrays. And the uh, solar arrays and navigational antenna uh, now uh, confirmed to have been deployed. So a perfect launch for the uh, Soyuz booster, delivering uh, the Progress 88 cargo craft into its preliminary orbit. And the uh, two-day chase to reach the International Space Station now underway. And there's our first view from the uh, external camera on the Progress vehicle, the uh, familiar crosshaired engineering view that shows uh, the preliminary uh, functioning of all of the uh, elements on the Progress resupply vehicle. It was a very smooth, uneventful, eight minute, 49 second ride from the launch pad to its preliminary orbit, Progress 88. Now uh, on its way for a docking on Saturday morning to the Poisk module on the space facing side of the International Space Station. And uh, the flight controllers now uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow reporting a good activation of the uh, Progress's CORE's automated rendezvous system. That will come into play uh, in earnest on Saturday morning during the terminal phase of the rendezvous.
This is Mission Control Houston. Just to recap, uh, the Soyuz 2.1A booster launched on time at uh, 4.42 and 59 seconds a.m. Central Time, which was 2.42 and 59 seconds p.m. at the launch site at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. It was a uh, smooth ride to orbit for the uh, three-stage Soyuz booster, eight minutes and 49 seconds after launch. The Progress 88 cargo craft was deployed from the third stage of the Soyuz booster, now in its preliminary orbit, to begin a two-day journey to the International Space Station. Looking ahead to Saturday, we will begin our rendezvous and docking coverage for the Progress 88 at uh, 6 a.m. Central Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. The docking schedule for 6.47 a.m. Central, 7.47 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time on Saturday morning, the progress to automatically link up to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Right on the heels of the conclusion of that, we will segue into our coverage of the Boeing Starliner crew flight test launch. That coverage to begin at 7.15 a.m. Central Time, 8.15 a.m. Eastern Time, leading to a launch of the Atlas V rocket from Pad 41 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida to deliver Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams on their 24-hour journey to the International Space Station and a docking on Sunday afternoon to the forward port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. So once again, a uh, very smooth and clean flight of the Soyuz booster, Progress 88, now safely in its preliminary orbit, headed for a Saturday morning docking to the International Space Station. Thank you for joining us this morning. We'll see you again on Saturday morning with our twin bill coverage of Progress's docking to the station and the crew flight test launch to the International Outpost. For now, we'll sign off. This is Mission Control Houston.